Hello friends, today I come in the unboxing of my new camera Nikon Z5. This camera was launched in 2020 because of some reason I was not able to purchase on that time. And I was also not decided to move to the mirrorless cameras. I am a product photographer and using Nikon D7500. It is also very good camera but it is a APC sensor camera. I was planning to switch to the mirrorless so I decided if I am going to the mirrorless why not switch to the full frame camera. So I switched DSLR to mirrorless as well as a DX2 FX. Before unboxing I want to tell you why I selected Nikon Z5 against new Nikon ZFC, Nikon Z62 and 72. On this slot Nikon Z6 is a best choice but I selected Z5. The Nikon Z5 is an anti level full frame mirrorless camera that looks and handles almost exactly like its higher end Z mount siblings, the Z6 and Z7. It is built around the stabilized non BSI 24MP CMOS sensor which is likely more closely related to the generation of the chip found in the Nikon D750 DSLR rather than the newer PSI sensor in the Z6. My selection on few priorities. Z5 is a full frame camera, sports a 24MP full frame sensor unlike its big brother the Z6. Override the new ZFC camera because of its APC sensor. Affordable price. Built in focus shift feature, best of the product and macro photography. The 273 points hybrid AF system easier to operate AF tracking mode and increasing reliability when using face and eye detection. The Z5 has a full 5 axis in the body stabilization system or vibration reduction as Nikon calls it just like the Z6 and Z7. What I miss in this camera, the Z5 maximum bus rate and video capabilities are considerably less than that of the Z6, 4.5 fps versus 12 fps. 4K video from the Nikon Z5 comes with the heavy 1.7x crop versus uncropped with the Z6 II. Because of the major price difference, I selected G5. I am a not a wildlife photographer or sports photographer, so 4.5 fps is a not a barrier. As far concern of a cropped video, I don't much require uncropped 4K videos. Let's start unboxing Nikon Z5. It is a Nikon Z5 box and FPJ tube adapter box. First I am unboxing a Z5 box, very attractive black and yellow box. This is a kit with the Nikon Z24. 200 Z series lens. You can see big logo of the Z series in the front of the box. Now I am shifting open side in front of me so I am able to open the box. I have already cut the seals of the box. Opening the top and side covers. In the first shelf of the box you will find documents and cards. The first card is a Nikon membership card. Next I picked Z5 instruction manual. Many people don't read it but I always read each and every feature of the product I have purchased. I strongly recommend you to read it. Two year warranty card is also here. It is a very important to complete the dealer stamps. In my 20 year journey with the Nikon I never faced any issue with the camera. If any will come, you need to complete all formalities of your warranty card. The last card is the list of the service centers where you can avail the free services in the warranty period or paid or paid after warranty period expired. Now I am opening the top shelf to unbox the camera. I am shifting the box inside so you will able to see the nice view of the Z5. So I am picking a camera and unwrapping it.
the Z5 sit comfortably in the hand and feels exceptionally well, well constructed while it is the same size of the weight as the Z6. Some of Z5's body components are plastic rather than magnesium alloy including the back and the base. But you did be hard pressed to notice the difference even with the both cameras in front of you. And Nikon say Z5 is a dust and moisture sealed to the same impressive standard at a Z6 and Z7. There is a nice big 3.2 inch LCD monitor on the back of the camera which makes composing shots and using the touch screen to adjust settings and focus quick and easy. But while the monitor does pop away from the camera body to tilt up and down, it does not flip or rotate. The Z5 touch screen is a nice and responsive and can be used while shooting for AF placement or to the fire the shutter while navigating the menus and while browsing the images in playback. This kit comes with the Nikon 24-200mm G mount lens, but I choose the Nikon 24-70mm S line lens. This is a one of the most important lens Nikon has announced in the recent years. Although the retail price of a 24-70mm f4 is a dollar per thousand, most photographers will buy it as a part of a kit with the Nikon Z6 or Z7 instead. That brings the price down to the much more reasonable dollar 600. That price, along with the limited number of the Z lenses so far, means that most people who buy a Z6 or Z7 will end up with the 24 by 70 f4 in their bag from the day one. The S line is a design to be the sharpest and the best available which goes some way to explaining their higher asking price. Although the Nikon Z2470 f is a not designated as a macro lens, it is a suitable for the use when shooting typical macro subject such as flowers, you can get fairly close to your subject with the minimum focusing distance of 0.3 mm of 0.3 meters. Usually described in qualitative terms such as smooth or creamy, bouquet is the word to the describe the out of focus area in an image. Although the maximum aperture of a lens f4, you can still get very pleasing shallow depth of field with the pleasing and attractive bouquet since evaluation of bouquet can often be down to the personal preference. Z2470 is the sharpest focus distance of a 0.3 meter and pleasing bouquet on f4. These are the main reasons I prefer Z2470 f4 against 24 to 200. You will also get a C-type cable to charge camera battery and delivering camera with the computer. Definitely you will find charging cord and Nikon Z5 battery charger in the kit. It is the same charger you can use for the Nikon D7000 series and Nikon Z6 and Z7 cameras. Now I put back all accessories in the box and, and see the build quality of the camera and lens. First I am opening the body cap so I can attach the lens to the camera and also opening lens cap and rear cap of the Nikon Z2470. I am attaching the lens to the camera from white point so always take care attach your lens to match the white marker both on lens and camera body to avoid any accidental damage. The big difference between the currently available 2470 and other lenses is that the for the 2470mm before you can use the lens you will need to twist to unlock it. This helps to keep it smaller for carrying around when not in use. And you can always leave it extended if you are taking a lot of pictures in fairly rapid succession. If you switch on the camera while the Nikon Z24-70 f4 is locked, a warning will be displayed on the screen to tell you to unlock it. As you unlock it, you can see the display on the screen. Here are options in the back display button so you can switch the display that you want to see on the screen. As you are able to see the settings display to camera view display now. The new lens also features an internal focusing system that uses stepping motor and has a mechanism to reduce the effects of the focus breathing. Focus breathing means that the change of a focal length often due to the movement of the glass elements within the lens barrel when the focus distance of the lens is a change. 
it is reduced with the new feature. The minimum foxing distance is a 30 cm. Foxing is so fast, even I switch the subject very fast. I am putting back all caps on the box so you can see the close look on the camera and lens. The other addition I have made and that is a FTZ2 adapter. Unboxing the box, it has a warranty certificate inside the box. The second thing is in the box is an instruction manual. Finally, you can see the small adapter look like a teleconverter. The Nikon FTZ second adapter lets you mount Nikon F mount DSLR lenses on its newer Z mount mirrorless cameras. But is the updated new Nikon FTZ adapter worth getting? In a word, yes. In three words, yes or no. It is definitely worth the investment if you are if you are switched to mirrorless G's G series camera from Nikon DSLR and have some F mount lenses that you did like to keep using. It is also useful for plugging the remain gaps in the Nikon Z mount lens lineup and the F mount substitutes. For example, there is a no native Z mount compact telephoto zoom for the full frame cameras nor a fairly in inexpensive 105mm macro lens F mount lens like the Nikon AF7300mm F4.5 5.6 EDVR. So let's take how it works with the, my Nikon 7300 f4.5 5.6. I have this lens with me now, and you can see it is a Nikon 7300 DS format lens, and I am using on my FX full frame body with the help of FTZ adapter. I am releasing the 2470 from the camera body and opening the Z mount cap. and attaching to the camera by matching white marker on the camera. Now I am opening F mount cap on the FTZ adapter and releasing the rear cap from the 7300DX lens and attaching lens to the FTZ F mount. Now you can use your F mount lens to any Z series cameras with FTZ adapter. The only difference you will find that is the focal length. In DX format, for example, 80mm on the DX body has the equivalent angle of the view as a 28mm on the FX body. It is just divide the actual FX length by 1.5, get the equivalent focal length for the DX 48 by 1.5 is equal to 80.6, which we tend to round to the 18 since 90mm is not common focal length. Actual divisor is slightly more than 1.5 in practice. But if you use the same 20mm lens on the both FX on the DX body, you will get the equivalent angle of view of 42mm lens, 28 multiplied by 1.5. We multiply in this case because of a DX sensor is a cropping of the angle of view compared to the larger FX sensor. So Z5 or any FX body get 300mm and 300mm on FX becomes 450mm equivalent on the DX. I am checking the foxing with the FTZ is a quite good. No foxing sound and foxing is also very sharp. You can see the results of these images. Now I am releasing 70 to 300 lens and also releasing the FTZ adapter and attaching the 24 by 70 lens to the body again.
I am very happy with its foxing speed and very fast foxing, especially foxing distance of a 30 cm. You can shoot like a macro. Much of the Z5 design is indistinguishable from that of the higher end Z6 or Z7 series camera which means the Z5 handles more like a semi pro body, it does an entry level, it is solid and comfortable in hand, dust moisture sealed and offer well placed responsive controls including an AF joysticks and touch screen, customization is also excellent. 3.6M EVF is the best in the class and it is the only entry level full frame mirrorless camera with the twin UHS-2 slots. In short, this is one of our favorite full frame mirrorless body under $2K and it is a well under. Conclusion of the Z5 is an extremely well-rounded camera for still photography and as well as for the video in fact, it is easily the most compelling stills oriented full framer for the cache. It is also means it is a natural vehicle to convert Nikon users from F to Z mount. That's all for today, I will come soon with the new features, thanks for watching.